Hey guys, Dion Taylor here. In this video, I'm going to be talking about Power Automate conditions and how you can utilize them in Power Virtual Agents. And you're probably going to think like, okay, am I not just going to use them any other way? I will use Power Automate to work with conditions. Well, actually the answer is no. And let me just start with the beginning so I can kind of explain to you what I'm talking about. So conditions always have a statement, right? Uh, this field contains data or it is blank or whatever that statement might be. And then we're, we're going to have two outcomes. We're going to have an if true, if that statement in that condition is true, then we're going to follow the logic in that if true path. And then if the statement is incorrect, if it is false, we're going to follow the logic in the if false path. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So on the screen here, you see my condition and then you can see those two different outcomes, the if yes path, and you can see the if no path. So in Power Virtual Agents, if we then want to feed the data from any particular path back to Power Virtual Agents, um, you would put a step in there that allows you to return those values to Power Virtual Agents. Right, because what happens if the statement is true might be different, obviously, than what happens if it's not true. Now, the problem with this is that if we're trying to add that step to return the values to Power Virtual Agents, we're actually going to get an error and the system is not going to allow us to do that. So what the best workaround is for this, I'm going to show you that in this video. So let's walk through what this would look like, right? When we have configured everything in the application. So you can see here, Nancy Anderson is tied to an account, PSA Adventure Works, and Thomas Anderson is not tied to a company or an account record in Dynamics 365. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you what this looks like. And first I'm gonna run this uh, as acting as Nanny, Nancy Anderson that is tied to that company. And I'm going to show you uh, what is going to happen here in Power Virtual Agents. So I'm just going to go ahead and start right here. I have an issue with my HVAC and that should take us to the correct topic. There we go. I'm understanding that you're having issues with your HVAC. What is your email address? So <clears throat> I'm going to enter my email address and this is very straightforward. I actually have Power Virtual Agent kick off this flow and then find uh, the name of that particular contact in my database. So it's asking me some other questions. You don't have to put this in here, but let's just go ahead and do that. What's the issue you're having? Can you enter a short description? Um, our HVAC is not cooling. And what I'm going to do right now is, oh, first some other stuff, right? Here's some articles. Did that fix your issues? I'm going to say no. And then it's going to ask you to create a support ticket. So when I say yes, it is actually then going to use a flow that has two conditions, right? What is going to happen when that if that contact record is actually tied to an account that we want to tie that account to the case and Nancy as a contact also to that case if Nancy does not have an account record associated with her contact record then I want to create the case and associate Nancy as the customer for that so you can see here the case has been created here's the case number let's just go ahead and do a quick search for that in Dynamics 365. And then of course I can't find it. So let's go ahead and just go to the company. And let's go to customer service. 
And here we can see that case that was just created, right? And we can see here the customer is PSA AdventureWorks because that's who Nancy was tied to and then Nancy is the contact. Now the second scenario, let me just go back here to my contacts, is Thomas, right? And his email address is someonem at example.com. So I'm gonna go back here to my Power Virtual Agents. Let me close out of this. This was excellent. I'm gonna say yes. Actually, I wanted to say no, but having issues with my H back. Okay, now we're gonna use Thomas's email address, right? Someone m at example.com. Uh, Thomas is having a heating issue. Our HVAC is not heating. No, that did not fix my issue. We want to create a support ticket. And now it's again going through that flow with that condition and it's creating another case. Now let's go back here to Thomas and find any related cases. And here we can see that now Thomas, because he's not tied to an account, is now set as that customer. Okay, so how do we handle those different outcomes in Power Automate Flow? So I'm gonna show you that. I'm gonna go ahead and create my new topic. I'm gonna make it a little bit simpler than all the questions that I had. I'm going to call this testing uh, HVAC issue test with Power Automate condition. I'm going to say testing Power Automate test condition. There we go. Those are some of my trigger phrases. And I'm going to save that topic and I'm going to go to my authoring canvas over here. So I'm going to get rid of this message and I'm going to answer a ask a question. So I'm going to say, what is your email address? We want to capture this information so that we can query the database and I want whatever the customer's typing in, I wanna save that as an email address. So I'm gonna also rename this, the response, so I know that that's an email address that they're going to fill out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pass that email address over to Power Automate Flow. So I'm gonna call an action And then it says it right here, PVA contact lookup by email. So I'll show you what that looks like. So this is where we're passing that information from Power Virtual Agents into this flow. So you can see here, I added an input and I created text for that. And you can name this whatever you want. So in this particular case, I named it customer email. And that's again, that data that's being forwarded, right? From Power Virtual Agents from the topic here into that my flow. Then it's gonna list some rows. So I'm looking for contacts where the email address equals, and don't forget these little, right? These single quotes where the email address equals, right, whatever information we got pushed over from Power Virtual Agents into this flow. And then I just wanna get one record uh, back, obviously. You probably wanna do some additional checks here if you do have uh, multiple folks in your database with the email address. Um, I'm just gonna keep it simple for now. Then what I'm gonna do here is I'm actually going to 
store that data, right? This is that I just want one record and then I want to store that unique ID. That's that contact ID. And then all I want to do is basically I want to go ahead and pass that contact ID back to Power Virtual Agents. Obviously, if you want additional information like first name and last name and stuff like that, you can do that as well. So your Power Virtual Agent can actually uh, talk to that particular person, say, hey, Nancy, right? So you can do that as well. Again, I just kept it very, very simple. So now let's go ahead and once we select that flow, we need to actually, right, send that customer email, right, which is this field, we need to populate that with something. And we want to populate that with this email address that your customer typed in. So I'm going to say email address. Now that I have that value, right, that contact ID that's coming out, I can use that uh, a little bit later. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to ask another question. And I'm going to say, do you want to create a case? And we're going to have two options. We're going to have yes, and we're going to have no. And I can change, obviously, the name of uh, where I'm storing this data, but I'm not going to do that because it's simple. If they're saying, no, we don't want to create a case, I'm going to end the conversation here. I need to go and move this over with the survey. And if they say yes, then I have another question. Please describe your issue. So this is going to be, I'm going to get the entire user response. So this is going to be the name of that case, right? So I can say case title, case name, whatever I want to call that. So this is what I want to pass to Power or to Power Automate when I'm creating that case. So it's described in the issue. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, again, call an action. And I already have it in here, but I'm going to show you what that looks like to actually create my case. Here it is. So again, let's take a look at that flow. So again, I'm going to store, right, that it says topic here, but this is that case name. And I need that contact ID that we got with our first flow. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to query for that row. And in case if you're wondering how I got to this step, you just go click here and add an action. And then I'm going to do data verse. And since this environment is not in the same environment as my Dynamics 365 instance. I'm going to pick this legacy connector. And once I pick that connector, then I want to get the get row action. So that is really how I got to that step. And then it's going to tell you, okay, well, what's the table name? The table name is contacts. And then obviously you want to get this contact ID that was fed in from that chat right from power virtual agents so now i have the contact record and this is really what this article is about right this condition so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to say from the get row i want to make sure that that company field right the company right from the get row action that company name that's that parent account or parent contact that it's not blank, right? It's not equal to null. And if you're wondering how do I get null in here, you just go here to expression, you type in null, and then you're going to click OK. That's how you get that null value in there. So the company lookup, right, on that contact record is not blank. And if that is correct, if it's not blank, then I want to obviously put in, well, first let's talk about this, right? We're going to create a case. So our table name is cases. Our case title is that topic that we got back from Power Virtual Agents, right? This guy. And then we, since we have data in that lookup for that account on that contact record, we want to put in that company name, right? That parent account. 
So I can just click on that and put that in here. But then you have to make sure that you set your customer type. And what that means is, well, the customer field on the case could either be filled with an account record or a contact record. So you need to tell it what you're going to store in that field. That's why I have accounts picked over here. So that's really all you have to do. Now, I also wanted to set the contact for this particular, as you can see here, for this particular case. So again, I can just type for contact and here I get the unique identifier of that contact. And that's how you can set that up. Now, if the company or the account lookup is empty, then we still want to create a case again with that topic. And then the customer is going to be a contact. So again, make sure you set your customer type to contacts. Now, the issue here is, right, what are we going to return to Power Virtual Agents? If I'm going to say here, return, what is a return value? Let's see, Power Virtual Agents, return value to Power Virtual Agents. If I'm going to do this, I need to do one over here as well. And it's not going to like that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get an error when I'm trying to save that. Let's just see uh, if we want to go ahead and say case ID, right? Because I want to return the case number. And then I want to return the case number here as well, right? Because they're going to be different case numbers. And then if I save this, I should get an error. There we go, right? It does not like that. Okay, so how do we handle that? Let's get rid of this, right? Let's get rid of that error. So what we will do then is in that return value that we're returning back to the chatbot to pass through to the customer, telling them what their case number is, we're gonna return both of them because they're not both gonna have data, right? It's either gonna go this way or it's gonna go take the if no path. So here I'm going to, again, add an output for text and you can put in there a case number. Let me actually scroll up a little bit. And then my value to respond is case number. Here it is. And you can see here, I have the case number from add a new row, which is this guy and from add a new row too, which is this guy. So I'm going to pick both one, two, and that's how you handle these conditions in Power Virtual Agents combined with, or I should say these conditions in Power Automate combined with Power Virtual Agents. Thank you so much for watching this video and don't forget to hit that like button. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss another episode again. Have a great day, everybody.